Yeah, Patricia Dieter, uh, my name is Patricia Dieter and my Cree name is White Buffalo Woman. I'm the granddaughter of Fred Dieter and Mary Bell Cody and these stories that are contained in this book are stories from my grandparents and the people that live on this reserve in this community, the Fowl Hills Reserves. And uh, the stories were re first recorded in 1955 by my grandfather. His daughter, Eleanor, actually made puppet shows from these stories and later on she actually published them as a book called Medicine Boy and Other Cree Tales. When the book went out of print, I decided that our kids still needed to hear these stories and in the original Cree language. So I decided that I would have the book published and uh, translated back into Cree. And I also had one of my high school students by the name of Aliyah Ajkate uh, come and do the illustrations for the book. So I'm very proud of this book and I'm proud to be able to share with you some of the stories today. Thank you. This story is about the legend of Kupel. Now the story about Capel really is uh, a story about our, our heritage as Cree people and the fur traders that we had in our background. And so um, I'll, I'll talk about it. I'll start it with it. Blue Cloud was a guide for the white traders in the early days. He was a handsome and robust young man who traveled across the prairies to the Great Lakes and north to the Arctic region. On one of his valley uh, trips to the Capel Valley, he met a lovely Indian maiden by the name of Evening Bird. Her skin was as smooth as the flower petal and her hair was glossy like the sheen of a raven's wing. They talked and he told her of his travels around the country and the strange ways of the newcomers and she listened intently, fascinated by his tales and admiring him for his bravery. And when it came time to leave again, she was very sad and wondered when, how long she would, she would endure the waiting until his next return. And while he was away, she dreamt of his coming back and was always first to hear the swish of his paddle coming down the lake towards her. At the same time, Blue Cloud's thoughts were always of evening bird and the time that she would be his forever. Finally, on one trip back, he decided that she was old enough, so he would ask her for her hand in marriage. Evening Bird met him as usual on the lake shore, and both were overjoyed to see each other, and they sat down by the canoe and talked, and Blue Cloud telling all about his travels. And at last he said, Evening Bird, I have something important to ask you. I think you're old enough to consider this. I'd like you to be my wife, and if you will consent, I'll go to your father and ask for him. Ask him for your hand in marriage. Oh, Blue Cloud, you know there isn't another man in this world that I would consider marrying but you, and I know we'll be very happy. Then all there is to do is to go and ask your parents. So Blue Cloud approached the teepee of Evening Bird's parents and found them sitting outside the campfire. And her mother arose and went into the teepee when she saw him coming, for it was the custom that a mother-in-law should not speak to her son-in-law, and she expected that the visitor soon would be her daughter's husband. The father welcomed Blue Cloud into his camp and offered to share a smoke with him. My son, I know you have something on your mind. I'll be glad to listen to you. Yes, Blue Cloud said, you probably noted that I have an interest in your daughter, Evening Bird. Now that she's old enough to know what, what's on her mind, we've talked over this and have agreed to marry, and I'm asking for your consent. My son, I've observed you for some time, and I know your trips are hazardous, and that you're a brave man to carry on this work. I'll be glad to give you my daughter in marriage, and I know that you'll take good care of her, and we'll prepare for the marriage on your next trip back. Well, Blue Cloud went away very happy, but on his next trip, the time seemed to pla pass slowly, and he made his rounds back and forth the country, up north and back until he, it was time to return to the Capel Valley, and he traveled quickly, making it double time by paddling day and night. As he drew near the valley, he suddenly heard his name being spoken and cried out, Aoina, Aoya, Aoina, Katepwa, who calls, who calls? but there was no answer. He paddled faster and twice again he heard the voice, the last time more distinct, and he recognized it as the voice of Evening Bird 
and he thought perhaps she had come out to meet him. And again he cried out, Aouina, Ketepwa, who calls, who calls? When he finally reached his destination, he went right into the camp, and it was strangely quiet, and suddenly he felt frightened. One of the women finally came in t to meet him and said, Evening Bird has just left. She called your name three times and passed away at the gleam of, of dawn. Blue Cloud turned sadly away and was left heartbroken, and he knew every time he came to the Capel Valley, he would hear her voice calling his name. When his white friends heard the story, they repeated it in French. Coupel, Coupel, who calls, who calls? So, so there we are, the story of our Coupel River and our Coupel Valley. 